Welcome back to the channel, Shooters. If you have been here before, thank you for coming back. If you have not, make sure you go down in the description below and find out ways to support me and support yourself. Support us and everything that we like to do. It's the best thing to do. Now, gonna be a little different. I am going to give you a Kestrel class. These things are absolutely phenomenal. There's a lot to them. Um, and it's twofold. So one, I'm gonna be traveling for a month. So I need to make sure that I get good videos out for you while I'm gone. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it into four different pieces, uh, four different videos to make it more digestible. So it's not just like an hour and a half of going through this, okay? So make sure if this is something that you've been wanting to get into, there are other videos out there, but I'm gonna go really in depth on this and just basically run my mouth as I click through and you guys will be able to see on an overhead screen. So this is gonna be part one. Let's go ahead and get into it. <sighs> Nothing real fancy, just down and dirty. Let's do this. So a Kestrel with applied ballistics. What is a Kestrel to go over at first? It is a weather station. It's a portable weather station that has a bunch of different atmospheric sensors in this. Now I am, this is not sponsored or anything like that. I use this every day doing what I do. If you guys don't know, um, I do this professionally. If the videos you see me do, the training you see me do, this is what I do full time. Uh, so I have to know everything about this. It actually got to a point where there were a couple questions students were asking me that I couldn't answer. And I was like, that's not good enough. So I went back to school on this thing. Um, found every video I could, talk to the people at Kestrel, talk to friends that use these things in their professions as well. Now there's hopefully not a single thing I can't answer about it. So anyways, it is an onboard weather station, has a wind meter in here as well that measures wind speed and direction, has compasses, has everything you need. Um, they do have these if you're a fan of Hornady Four Degrees of Flight, the app. They do have Kestrel with Four Degrees of Flight. I prefer mine with Applied Ballistics because it has more capability in my opinion. Um, but Ford Off is extremely accurate. There's just other things that Applied Ballistics have that uh, I prefer. So first things first, the button layout. <laughs> We have the power button and excuse me sounds um i am slightly sick still i'm getting over it but uh anyways button layout we have the power button select your arrows for navigating on your um through their menus this gearbox which a lot of times is a um, a back button as well your light which you can set to either a white light or a red light depending on the you know the environment you're in but you can also double tap it for a quick back and forth which i'll show you and then your little red select button here which does different things captures whatever you need to do anyways to turn it on first just hold and turn it on now this is going to be very barney style which actually might be a little difficult for me simply because i'm so used to just glancing over a lot of the simple stuff so for me whenever i'm not using it um, I like to set it. I don't always do. I like to set mine back down to hundred yards. There's no reason for it. It's just something my, uh, I would say OCD brain likes, but it's more called putting back where the he found it. And that probably just demonetized the video by saying that. Anyways, so let's start off with the ballistics side of it. Now, if you see up here in the top right corner, what that indicates is the target you're on. You can set different targets in here. You can list them one through whatever number, or you can list them A through Z. Mine is in numbers, and that's what target you're on if you're using different target cards. Now, the top is elevation, E for elevation, which I'm at 100. That's where my zero is for this gun. It's my BCM, my main slam piece, if you will. Uh, let's make sure. Yeah, that's showing. Windage, all right, the number right below. Now, if I have wind in here, typically it will show it in two brackets. So I'll go ahead and just quickly show that. I'll put this up to an eight mile an hour wind. I'll put this to a four. Now you can see it in two different brackets and how much it moves at that distance, okay? Now, to go through, down the list, and I'll go into each and every single one of these. But we have target, wind, gun, which is the profile of the gun. That's a big topic to go into. Environment range card, which there are certain things that you have to have either the, um, uh, what is it, the updates for, or you have to purchase the certain model of Kestrel. Or if you don't have the certain model of Kestrel that has some of the like accuracy first features in there or range card, you can simply go online 
buy it and then update your Kestrel um, if it's all logged in there and then it'll update the uh, system so you have all the capabilities if you will. Target card, again, we already talked about that, right? Different target cards they can make, up to 10. Um, accuracy first features, which we'll get into. The ballistics, which is incredibly handy, especially for teaching. And you can manage your gun profiles individually, so it shows. So like if you're going to a match, you can turn all of them off except your match gun, because I have seen many shooters do uh, use the wrong data in an entire match for a gun, which is kind of funny. All right, now, gonna double tap the light and it's gonna take us over to the atmospheric side. Now, if you guys don't know Kestrel originally, I believe, yeah, they started off doing atmospheric readers and everything for uh, sailors and all that. Then they got into this. Now you can do different things in here. My altitude, you can see plenty easy. Now this is a combination. This is direction, wind speed, and altitude. So there's a compass, right? So it's showing me different directions. And then um, date and time which actually I need to update. Um, magnetic North, now compasses, they can get a little wax, so you have to make sure every place you go, get out into the open and redo your compass calibration. It's a really easy walkthrough process. Uh, wind speed, crosswind from that wind, you got your headwind, so you can capture different ones and really get fine tuned with it. The temperature, which is perfect in here. Humidity on 100%. That's probably because it's in my hands. Oh, that's another point I should make. If you have this thing in your hands, in your pocket, on your body, whatever, um, you will mess with the sensors. So when you want to get out and capture the environment, a lot of people you'll see spinning them. Um, I never spin mine. I know Kestrel does say to spin, but I just kind of figure if I just leave it out and let it capture, it's more than enough. Um, the reason why you spin them, if I remember correctly, is to uh, basically dry out the sensors from the humidity of your body. Pressure, barometric pressure, and back to altitude. Now, again, you can either hit the gearbox and go back, and I can select between weather, ballistics, or on an easy mode, which is simply just a condensed version, or I can go from here, double tap the light. Now, I'm gonna go up, actually, you know what? Let's start here. All the different things here. So we have Bluetooth, which we can go into Bluetooth, and then you can switch it to device or PC or mobile, like your cell phone. Device would be something like range finders or um, if you have them, Victronics Vector X, so you can connect directly to those, which is awesome. Um, and you can set here to device, connect, all that kind of stuff. You can, the cool thing about this, if I go to device, or excuse me, PC mobile, turn on your pin. This is really handy if you're at a match or something or just around a lot of people using these um, so that you're not connecting to someone else's device or they're not connecting to yours and things can get mixed up. So it's not just about like security and hide my profile. No, um, it's a convenience thing, okay? So you can also set it so like mine's available or you can just turn your Bluetooth completely off if you don't want it. Um, data port, this does have a data port so you can direct connect. But uh, I never do that. I've never seen anyone do it, so I don't really worry about it. Um, now, memory options. This shows you how much memory is used. These things can hold, well, my model can hold up to 30 profiles. I originally had a different model um, I bought years ago. It can only hold like three or four, and it just was not enough. So I sold it, bought a new one, um, even though I could have just upgraded, but I didn't. Uh, you can auto store, store rate. And then overwrite, clear your log, so basically wipe everything, which I would never do. Uh, graph scale. Now you can go in here and you can set all your individual um, preferences for any of the measurements, or you can just turn them off. Like some people don't want to use density altitude, they'll just turn it off. Um, that way you have less information, and your calculator in here stops um, accounting for it and applying it to your dope, which there are some things in here you really don't need. Density altitude, uh, you would need at extreme, extreme, extreme distances. Um, altitude, always keep on. Pressure, I always keep the pressure on. And humidity as well. If you guys don't know, humidity means bullets fly better, okay? So temperature, keep on. Wind speed, obviously keep on. Now, display. Click display. Mine shuts down after 15 minutes. So. I can set it to 15, 30, 45, 60. Um, I wish there was like a five minute one, but 
not there. Contrast, you can set the different contrasts in your screen to make it really, really, really um, contrasted against the background. Um, in my mind, you don't really need it that much. I keep mine at eight, it's like a mid ground, and I figure the more contrast, the more battery usage over time. And again, white light or red light. So here's the white and the red, you can't really see all that much. But uh, because I'm not in a tactical environment, I just keep mine on white. Um, if you are in a tactical environment, red will be better, okay? Ooh, I'm a little shaky, had some coffee. Now system, you can change the time and date, which in here I definitely need to do that. Let me see what my time and date is. So we got, it is 14, 22. It's actually real, this is a really good example. Uh, 22, I'm not gonna worry about the seconds. And it is uh, the format of that, December 10th. Now, there we go. Now mine's set, boom, good. Compass calibration. I'm not gonna do this here, but basically I would just hit select, your center button, and I would sit here and spin it, just like this. All right, for 30 seconds, nice and slow. The reason you don't you don't need to turn yourself you just spin this um, the reason why I wouldn't do it here one I'm not going to take the time to do it here um, for the video but two I'm surrounded by so much metal it's going to throw the compass calibration off so there's no point for me to do it all right it would just mess it up from whatever it is accuracy first I have turned on if you have accuracy first and you can't access it make sure you go to system and turn it on not off okay measurements you can go in here again turn off, turn on, whatever, wet bulb I have off, dew point off, heat index off, um, basically stuff that I have no use for, right? Units, change the different units. So if you're someone in Europe and you go buy something else, you can simply do it there. Or if you're just weird, you can change your language. And then battery. Now here's the thing with the battery. <clears throat> you can select the type of battery, but you have to make sure you click the right one or else the life percentage of the battery won't read properly. Okay, so see how these say different things. Mine's alkaline, and you can find this on your battery. Um, and make sure you do that, because I like I didn't know this for a long time, and mine always read as a fully dead battery, but the Kestrel never died. So make sure you can set that there. Humidity calibration, calibrate and controlled environment away from HVAC and all that, which again, I'm not gonna do. Factory restore, definitely not gonna do. Now, you can come in here about and find your latest version, okay? Finding your latest version is a good idea if you are connected and or you need to know real quick if you have the uh, newest update. I always suggest checking and updating before you go out and do anything. Um, some of the updates can be really fast, as in like a minute or two. I've had one update, it took almost 45 minutes and I was teaching a class. So suddenly it put my Kestrel out of commission for that amount of time. So make sure you are always checking that. I can't really tell you what all these individual things mean. I don't make it. Um, now this is the legal stuff which we don't really need well i don't at least not for you guys uh and you can play snake which is kind of fun um you can sit here and play it and there is actually a good thing about um playing snake on here is you learn where all of these keys are really fast um so if that's something you want to do or waste your battery and uh, <laughs> you can definitely do that my high score is 10 i am obviously not very good at this um maybe i'll play it on a plane soon or something all right let's go back now that was all of these. Now we're gonna go, I already talked about the elevation and the windage. Now target, wind, gun, environment, range card, all that. We're gonna go ahead and walk through that. So that's gonna be the first part of this video. If you, real quick overview of everything that this thing is and uh, the next video, stay tuned for next week because we are going to go in here and we're going to work this entire ballistics side of it and talk about every single bit of that, which is gonna be very in depth. So make sure you have a pen. And if you find something interesting, one thing that helps is note down the time in the video so you can go back and check it out. All right, that's all I got for you. If you guys have anything for me, let me know, put them in the description and make sure you get out and bang. If you're still here, call some friends, do what you got to do. All right. Talk to them, chat with them, say, Hey, this is me. What's you. All right. And that, that sometimes that's all it needs to be. Uh, if you know a friend is sick, throw them some love, do a prayer for them, do whatever you need to do. That's all I got. Get out and bang.